Hello folks and welcome. Zorin OS 17.1 Core. This is uh, not the pro version, it's the standard version, but uh, this is the GNOME desktop, GNOME, not XFCE. And today I'm going to talk about uh, how to create launchers on your desktop because there's not a direct tool for that. I'll show you a tool that you can create uh, that you can do this rather easily, point and click. Now, some of the toys that I have sitting over here are something I created um, using Born Again Shell apps. And um, I'm going to have a little fun here showing you uh, miscellaneous um, fortune stuff. Uh, they're just sayings off the internet and uh, memory usage and having fun with birthdays. And this one does weather. Uh, but more importantly, if you want to know how to do um, launchers on your desktop, sometimes that's a difficult process to figure out for Zorin. And, uh, and if you want to have some more excitement, I'll show you how to make a couple of script files and uh, we'll have some fun. And I'm going to demo that for you before I get going into creating launchers. And these launchers are all part of my Zorin menu now. And uh, I have thing with the weather, the birthday, the fortune and the memory usage as examples. And uh, there'll be a couple of pieces of software that uh, you can install to have this fun and it shouldn't be too difficult. In either case, I'm going to be showing uh, all of these commands here can be ran directly out of terminal with simple commands. But if you want to use the full featured um, sort of bash application, I'll show you how to write those. I would just uh, recommend that you have your screenshot tool ready at and ready to go. If you don't want to use the built in one, which is uh, the sub menu here, this is the screenshot tool for that. And you can do a selection or screen or you can install other tools. All right, let's get this over with. Filming in 1920 by 1080, adjust your YouTube player accordingly. Linux for seniors is the name of my channel. Linux is for any age. This icon, you should find smaller down here with uh, yellow brackets if you like to subscribe. If you don't see it, find me on YouTube. That's just a watermark. So let me give you some examples of these first. All right, so um, I can read this on my screen, but it was probably too small on yours. So I'm going to use control shift and plus to make that terminal box bigger. That's all I'm doing is making it larger for you. So it's right now it's flashing month and year. So this is something I created to have a little bit of fun with uh, people's birthdays. It can uh, be in format of month and year. So you can type in January, whether it's uppercase or lowercase, it doesn't matter. Space 1970 or the number one, 1970. Just put a space in between the two. If you produce errors, um, this will not hose up the script, but more importantly, it'll just display an error. So an example of uh, this, I'm gonna put in February of uh, 19, uh, let's see, 1973. If you have a friend born in February of 1973 and your friend was born on the 8th, that was a Thursday. And you can have all kinds of fun with your friends and family. So this is using NCAL. NCAL displays the um, days of the week in a vertical fashion. I can also convert this application uh, almost instantaneously in, in 10 seconds, and it'll display the days of the week across. And that will be using a CAL command. And I'll talk about NCAL versus CAL in a little bit. And it's asking me for a new entry. So a little bit of history, um, maybe for you folks in the United States. What day did July 4th fall on in 1776? I'm going to type in 7, 1776, and that would be a Thursday. That's July 4th right there. So again, you can put in people's birthdays and have a little fun with them. Your friends and family, probably a lot of them don't know what day of the week they were born on. You can also do a history. Let's put in 5 for May and the year 1601. There's the calendar from May 1601. So if you're a historian looking for the 20th, that was a Wednesday. All right, I'm gonna close that. This one here is just random sayings off the internet and this particular command and script file requires internet because all of this stuff comes randomly off the internet. I don't even know what's gonna come up when I hit enter, but I will hold down the control shift and plus keys to make it bigger for you. It looks fine on my screen, but I understand a lot of you folks screens are a lot smaller than mine. But on the other hand, when you're watching it on a YouTube, sometimes things are small. It's just asking me to press enter. 
So I'm going to do that. So uh, right after the equal sign is a saying by Mark Twain. I'm going to hit enter again. There's a different saying also by Mark Twain. Enter again. This one by Shakespeare. Enter again by another person. Another, And I can continually do this. All right, I'm going to hit close. This one here is a little bit practical. This will show me my random access memory and swap file usage. All right, making this box bigger, control, shift, and plus. It says total memory is 31 gigabytes, currently in use, two. I'm filming also. That's why it's high usage. It also shows me my swap file. This actually is set to auto close in 88 seconds or I can just manually close it. This one here does weather. Control, I'll make this bigger for you. Control, shift, and plus. I'm using a standard computer, tower computer, regular keyboard, regular mouse. I'll just put in London. Now my script actually interfaces with another script online. And this uses a curl command and wttr.in. It might not look anything like it to you, so I'm going to go full screen and reduce this in size so it makes sense to you. Okay, so that's the weather for London. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, morning, noon, evening, night. Symbology, Igor Chubbin is not my name. Igor works with WTTR. Again, their script is what's running this. My script is what just initiated it. You need internet for this. And again, I also recommend that you run these kind of things in full screens. The other thing about scripts like this is uh, the background is black. If I switch Zorin's appearance over to the lighter side of the house, this kind of scripts will bleed out. In other words, you can't tell the yellow and uh, it's, it's not very pleasing on the eyes. There's nothing different about the script other than the background. Okay, so I'm switching that to dark mode. It looked better. So I presented four things to you. If you're interested in the script stuff, toward the latter part of the video, I'll explain these. But right now we're talking about launchers to launch these script files. These script files are located in my user SAM. You, it doesn't say so at the top, so I'm gonna use Control L and that displays your username now. Anyways, Sam has a whole bunch of these scripts he's got saved. One was for the birthday, one was for memory usage, the other one was for that random fortune message thing, and the other one was weather. Now I did it in two ways to show you this. So this one here, toward the latter part of this video, you'll see that these script files were written with a text editor, and some of them, uh, you can leave the .sh on there, or you, you, you don't have to, as long as they're set for running as a program. So I'm going to right-click on this one. And all of them are allowed to be run as a program. So I'm going to create uh, new launchers on my desktop. Now, if you've never done this before, you can be on the Internet for a long time, and a lot of advice you'll get is to create .desktop files, which can be cryptic-looking to you. They look like that depending on what you're doing here. All right, and a lot of people have difficulty with these. So what I'm gonna show you here is a graphical tool to create these. And once you do that, they become parts of your menus. Here's the fun with birthdays, the one I just showed you a couple of minutes ago. I also have a shortcut here and here. So there's a tool that if you open up your software store that you can install called Menu Editor. Some of you folks may be familiar with this and maybe some not so much. So menu editor will allow you to add and remove applications from your menu. It comes in two different types of packages, Flatpak and Zorin. I'm using the Zorin package. Ladder, the, I'm not gonna close the software store just yet. So uh, if you are wanting to stick around and wanting to know a little bit about script files, I also suggest that you install Kate uh, text editor. It's got some nice bells and whistles. Okay, so let's first focus in on making some icons. I'll use the existing scripts 
that Sam, our made up name user today, has created for these with different icons. Now that Menu Editor is installed, we type in Menu and we open up Menu Editor. So Menu Editor looks like this. You can just leave the default accessories if you like. And we're going to do plus and we're going to add a launcher. You've got only three options. So uh, give your creation a name. I'm going to actually use the one for the memory usage, but with a different icon and name. So I'm going to give this guy a different name. We'll just call that uh, uh, mem test. Now you click on the gear symbol and uh, you're allowed to pick icons from the system or you can bring in your own. The bring in your own, I'm going to give you cautions because the fact is that I've been doing this for many years and I've, this is not my first YouTube channel. And my same advice goes. When you have custom icons, you can place them in a folder somewhere in your home folder. But once you use one or more of those icons somewhere in your system, do not rename the folder, do not rename the icon. I'll tell you why. When you reboot your computer, your system needs a path to find that icon. If you renamed it or moved it to a different folder name, your system can't find it. If you want to stick with something simple, browse the system icons. All right, what am I going to choose? I have lots of choices. I have a scroll bar in here. Okay, so I have lots of choices as far as picking an icon. So as I'm dealing with memory, I'll just pick this clock thing just to be, well, different. Okay, and uh, this part here, the description is all basically your choice or you can just not use it. It doesn't matter what you type in here. Okay, I'm just giving you that example. So test, test, I'll just type in. All right, so the commands, if you are using standard commands like top, for instance, and you use terminal to open, just be prepared that your icon will blink because it's not holding the terminal box open. You have to make special provisions for your terminal box if you're going to try to do standard commands. All right, so this is uh, the, sorry, I meant to hit about. This is GNOME Terminal, by the way. So I'm not going to do any changes to the terminal box. So what I'm, why I wrote the script is because of that. Because I can put a command in the script that will hold that box open for me. And it's actually called a sleep command, which I'll cover later. So I'm going to click this command folder and go find that script file that runs that memory usage thing, which is in Sam's folder. Sam is our made up user for today. And it is called um, memory something, memory usage. There it is. I do need to run it in terminal though, but I don't need to do anything special with it because the script will take care of that for me. And then I'm going to hit the save launcher. So instead of me creating a dot desktop file, I created that now and it's part of my menu. So if I type in the word mem, I have mem test right here. I can also scroll for it, but right click, add to desktop. There's one. Right click, pin to dash. Single click, double click, doesn't matter. Same icon. All right. Holding down the control shift and plus to make it bigger for you on your screen. Or on my screen, actually, but you get the idea. It was actually plenty big on mine. Just making it larger for you. So it's displaying my memory usage and also my swap. This is the same icon. I'm not going to enlarge that one. This was just a double click. So if I wanted to get rid of those, I would just uh, type in the name of the icon and uh, right click, remove from desktop, right click, re unpin from the panel or taskbar, whatever name you want to give this panel. A lot of folks call this the panel bar. I do. But anyways, so I got rid of those. I'll do one more for this one. Um, no, I'll do one for the birthday. All right, so menu, editor, open it, plus, launcher, name. B day, test. I'm not even going to bother with the description. Let's find an icon for it, and we'll use. Um, 
we'll use that triangle just to be different. All right, since I already know the name of the script file, it's called birthday event, and I'll explain these later. I do want it to run in terminal, and I'm done. Now I just created a launcher for that. Okay, so B day test is it the name of it. Add to desktop, pin to dash. Open that up, runs the same script file. I don't think I need to open that one up. So that's the same script file as this one. They're identical. Okay, so we'll leave all those icons in a pile over here. Now let me talk about terminal commands that actually perform these. Yes, you can run these directly from terminal. All right, let's uh, make this a little bit larger. So again, Sam is our user for today, and that's the name of my computer. So I'm going to type in history. This is the first command if you want the birthday one or calendar. It's called ncal. If you decide to use sudo apt-cal, it will not find it. Let me show you that. I'm going to punch that directly. Sorry, not full screen. I'll do it on that command line. So apt, ap, I'm sorry, sudo apt install is the command for installing anything. And cal is the name of the application. So it's requesting a password. So when I do that, it says E, unable to locate package. I either got one or two things going on. Did I spell everything correctly? Yes, it did. It's only three letters. So unable to locate package cal, that means it's not in their library. However, if I use the upper arrow key and type in ncal, that will find it. And it will install ncal, which also has cal. I'll show you that in a minute. Mine is already installed, so it's just going to complain that it's already there. And it's telling me that right there. It's already on the newest version. So I'm going to hit it clear. So as I did this earlier, I'm going to just punch in one date. We'll just use January. I don't know. We'll do 1856 just as a random number. So I know this is using um, NCAL. How do I know that? Because it's displaying it vertically. I can convert this program in less than 10 seconds to display this Sunday through Saturday across. Let me first show you this in terminal though before I do that. So if I type in MANCAL, or NCAL, I should say, it'll give you the definition of what you just installed. It displays a calendar. And more importantly, it has two commands for that, CAL and NCAL. You remember when I tried to install CAL by itself, it failed. But NCAL, it, it installed. And it will on yours too. So I'm going to perform both of these for you. I'm going to hit Q. So the cal command looks like this. So the Sunday through Saturday is across the screen. If I do ncal with the same, it displays it in a vertical fashion. It's still the same month. I'm going to give you a couple of tips also while I'm doing this. If you type in cal space 3, it gives you the full year. I'll have to use the scroll wheel on my computer mouse or use the drag bar. January through December. That's the whole year. This is a little bit more beneficial than clicking this if you want the full year. And you'll also notice that this displays these across on all the months. If I type in NCAL space 3, it will also give me 12 months. However, this looks a little different to you, doesn't it? I'm going full screen. So our Sundays are not displayed for each month, but it's displayed on the left side of the column versus these are going across individual months. Does that make sense? Okay. This looks a little different to you when I'm depending on what kind of zoom level you're in. Okay, so I'm gonna punch up clear. So let's stick with some simple commands. Type in cal space and somebody's uh, birthday, like uh, May would be five. 1972. So if you got a friend born May 1972 and your friend was born on the 17th, he or she was born on a Wednesday. I'll do this with NCAL also. 
using the exact same line. Okay. The 17th is still on a Wednesday. 3, 10, 17, 24, 31. Let me scroll up a little bit. Here's Wednesday. 3, 10, 17, 24, 31. All of my column is vertical or horizontal. That's all. That's the only difference. So the script file that I ran here earlier, what are we doing? We want to use 5, 1972 to be consistent. Okay, this is using NCAL. You know how I know that? Because if I put in gibberish and hit, <coughs> hit enter, it'll say NCAL not a valid year, as in the error. So I'm going to leave this up for a second and it'll hold the settings if I do this. I'm going to go and open up my script file and edit this thing and using Cal instead of NCAL. So it's this one here. So I'm going to open this with Kate and we'll talk about this a little bit later. I'm going to edit line 22 for a second and use Control S to save that. Control S is just a save statement. So now I'm going to close that and reopen the script. I don't have to do anything with the launcher. This looks identical, but it's not. So um, what do we do in January of 1970, I think? Just to be consistent. I want you to notice that they're displayed differently. This one has the Sunday through Saturday in a vertical fashion. This one does not. So, and how I know this is if I type in gibberish, it says an error with Cal on it. Not a valid versus over here when I did this. Uh, do I have the error listed? Yes. The error listed here says NCAL on it. You saw how fast I converted that script file. I didn't do anything with the launcher. Nothing. I'll switch this back now. I'll just type in an N in there. And then hit uh, Control S to save the file. And an Alt and F4 to close it and rerun the script. This time I'm going to close, I'll close them all so you can see they're closed. And I'll rerun the same thing. 1, 1970. Now it's using NCAL instead of Cal. All right, so all you got to do is remember to install NCAL and you'll have uh, both options in case you don't want to write your own script files. Okay, so Cal displays it that way. NCAL displays it this way. Full year again is cal space 3, enter, and cal space 3 displays it this way. That's cal. It has the weekdays across, and cal has them going in a vertical fashion. This thing with the fortune, remember I kept hitting enter and it gives me different sayings. Okay, that keeps doing this all day. Okay, that command there you can install also through terminal. And I am going to make this bigger again, which is uh, control shift and plus. And then we're going to hit up history. And the command that you want to use to install fortune, I'll find it in the menu here, is um, it's probably way at the top because I installed that a long time ago, is this one right here. They all start with sudo apt install. Uh, you can see that NCAL installation is right here. That's the proper one, not this one. However, the name of this application is Fortune-Mod. On some applications, sorry, on some Linux distros, it's just Fortune. This one has Fortune-Mod on it. However, the whole line needs to be that. sudo apt install Fortune-Mod. In my script file, I actually make mention of that. And I'll show it to you later. So with that installed, all you got to do in your terminal box, I'm going to use control C this time, so I don't have to scroll to the bottom and I'm going to type the word clear. All you got to do is type in the, the word fortune properly. If you do it like that, it's not going to find it. So it's actually giving me a guess. Fortune, is that what you're looking for? Yes. There's a saying right there by Sal Bello, upper arrow key on my keyboard to repeat that command and hit enter. Different saying now. Upper arrow, enter. Upper arrow, enter. This will be all day long. 
until you exit. What do monsters eat? Things. <laughs> what do monsters drink? Coke. Wow, things go better with Coke. All right, enough of that. Exit. So now I just showed you two cute little commands that you can run. One called Fortune, and the other one was called the birthday thing with NCAL and Cal. The memory usage um, is pretty simple. You don't have to install a thing. Shocker? Yeah, maybe. Can you remember the word free? As in free lunch. As in, uh, yeah, I'm giving you this information for free. All right, this is free memory. It uh, prints on your screen, memory and swap. It's hard to read though. So we're gonna do free space dash H for human readable. That's exactly what my script is doing here. This is the same command. You don't have to write yourself a script if you don't want to, but I just made it convenient on my panel so I can see my usage. Oh, sorry and make it bigger for you. All right, so the only difference between the two is if you don't put the dash H on there, you'll just get it printing on your screen this way. Still shows you memory and swap, the random access memory on your machine. MAN3 gives you the definition of that. You don't have to install it. You should have that already in your system. Okay, that's about the only one that you don't have to install is that would you like to see some of these scripts for the folks that were just curious about the launchers i'll say thank you for the folks that want to hang on i'll show you these scripts i always recommend subscription when i'm doing this stuff so your screenshot tool is right here you can do screen selection or window okay you can also install other screenshot tools i do recommend that you subscribe if you're going to create your own scripts that way you can rewatch and more importantly, make screenshots so you can duplicate that on your machine. But I will show you these scripts. They're not gonna cost you a thing other than your time. So for the memory usage, you are gonna be creating a text document. The text editor is for this system is gedit, okay? If you don't wanna use gedit, you can install others. I have Kate installed. Kate is an advanced text editor. And one of the reasons I like to use Kate is especially when I'm displaying stuff in teaching. So I'm gonna open this up. This file was saved as a program. It's a regular text document. It's very small. As a matter of fact, it is roughly 360, 346 bytes. It's hardly nothing. It doesn't have an extension on it. Unlike this one does. This one says weathercurl.sh. This is also, all of these are script files. All of them can be ran just like this. And now that looks familiar to you. All I did was create a launcher and put a fancy icon to them. This is what does all the magic. Opening up with Kate. Kate is an advanced text editor. You never wanna create these things using a word processor. I'm gonna use my control key hold it down while scrolling up with my computer mouse as I'm not using a touchpad. You need a bin bash statement. This is about the only time you'll see the, the, the pound symbol or hash mark. That's what we call it in the United States, pound. That's the only time you'll see that, that it's uh, not ignored as a remark. So that just means go look for, for born again shell. What is bash anyways? Well, here we go. M-A-N bash definition making that larger for you born again shell that's what that stands for there's lots of different shells but this is bash and it's very popular it has a bunch of options also i'm going to close that so that's line one the rest of this stuff is uh, really just all fluff could i have written this differently absolutely but here's the full script on this it's very small it's 18 lines and three of them are just used for descriptions so everything with the pound symbol here, minus line is one, minus line one, not Linus, line one, is uh, just descriptions. Simple free memory usage. You can again use it in terminal, type in free or free H. You don't have to install a thing. And more importantly, have fun. 
So echoes just means print that to the screen. So that's what it's doing here. It's printing this stuff to the screen. A very simple born again shell application. I probably should be spelled with a lowercase b. How about that? I'm going to do a control and s to save that. And I'm going to rerun that. Now you can see that with an uppercase letter. And where are we at? Here. And now it looks like it has a lowercase letter. Why? Because I just saved it just now, live, for you. Did I do anything with this launcher? Nothing. But I saved the script, and that's what's important. Now it has a lowercase b. The next line is uh, more text. And the next line, number five, is just uh, double quotes. That means skip a line. So basically, that's why you're seeing spaces in here. Okay. Now, this part is what does all the magic. So this box is being held open. As I told you, I did nothing to terminal. I didn't make any uh, uh, changes whatsoever. So what happens if I don't have the sleep command? Let me actually remove that on purpose. This time I'm going to just use a control and X. So it cuts it. And we're going to do a control and S to save it. This box will not open. It will flash on your screen. Let me uh, actually show you this. Okay, I'll close this one. You didn't see a thing, did you? Now you did. You saw it briefly flash on your screen. I'm doing this multiple times. Nothing happens. It looks like it has an error, but it doesn't. It actually completed the command. The only difference is, is I told the box that, uh, I'm sorry, I had it open already is um, I need to have a sleep command to hold it open because the other way I have to alter the terminal box. I don't want to do that. So I'm using the sleep command for this. So this part here when it prints 88 seconds is based on the number over here. It's how long it's going to hold it open. I'll do it for two seconds. And then I'm going to use control S and then close this and we'll minimize that. I didn't close anything. It auto-closed itself. One more time. 10-1, 10-2. Closed automatically in two seconds. All right, so I am going to re-edit this and give it some more time. 88 seconds usually is plenty of time. This again is just fluffy text. And control and S to save. Now if I open this up, this will stay open for 88 seconds. All right, hopefully you had enough on this. Again, my recommendation is this tool right here is a screenshot tool. If you don't want to use that, install another screenshot tool. This is the full script. It's very simple. All right, so that's one. So I'm going to open up this one. I'm in the 33rd minute, and I'll probably only have enough time for this one. And then I think we're going to call it good. This one's a little bit more complex. It still uses the bin bash statement for line one. Uh, on line two, it has a while do. And why am I shrinking this? So you can see this when I highlight it. When I highlight the while colon do, line 28 lights up yellow because that's a loop. If I just highlight line 28, then you see the do light up because that means that this is a loop. So this was the birthday thing, and it looks like that. The reason for all these funky looking things over here is because I wanted this box to kind of look uniform and away from this side of the screen. So I put in a lot of spaces in here. I also put in a code, which is a backslash 33 uh, side bracket 42 M to make it green. And then on the tail end, I put a backslash 33 open bracket 0M to make it black and white again. So the box looks white. That is all explained down here. I'll make this bigger now. Screenshots again are recommended. Okay. I'm going to first minimize that. You can do a screenshot now or hit pause on your player. Scroll a couple more. Another screenshot. 
and another screenshot if you want the text. So let me explain this. So the a quote with the little asterisks, um, you can uh, put in more of these things to align the boxes up in your terminal box. That's what I did here to align this using these little stars. Could I have done this differently? Absolutely. Absolutely. There are many ways to do this. The next box here has an E, open bracket 93, which converts this to yellow. These are explained down here. So if I highlight this open here, you will see that light up yellow downstairs. That's what I like about Kate when you do stuff like this. So I'll uh, highlight this one. And uh, I thought I had, uh, oh, it's because I didn't light up the M on this one. All right, there we go. Now they're, they're in there. So, um, so the 42 is the color green, but if I put the E, open bracket 5M, then the green background will blink. Okay, so that part here is also found in this statement right there. So where's the box itself? So it's blinking green with white text. It looks different when you have this in this mode. And it's harder to read sometimes when you have a white background. But we're trying to stay consistent with the themes you have, or I'm trying to. All right, so basically we're at a point where it's flashing a cursor. It's waiting for input from the user, and that input is called read, dash P. It is explained right here. The date is the input field. This is a made up name. It's a holding tank. You put in whatever. The user puts in whatever they put in there, whether it's good information or bad. Remember, if I put in bad information, it does report it back as bad, but it doesn't hose the script up. It's using an NCAL versus a CAL. So if I leave off the N and use CAL, will the script work? Absolutely. And uh, what will happen is when you use the other command, I'm just using 1970 as my reference mark. So this is using NCAL. That means it displays the Saturday and Sundays in a vertical fashion. If I use CAL in here, it displays the Sunday through Saturday in a, ver in a horizontal position. So it's your choice how you want to turn line 22. Okay. The rest of this is literally all fluff. And this is the pound symbols, as we call them in the United States, or hash. It's just the explanation of this stuff. All right. I even put in here, please note this, you can use cal or ncal for the command, but you should install ncal. You will need to have ncal installed. I even put that in there. So again, take a picture of the script. 38 minutes. Hopefully you've subscribed. Thank you for watching.